Thank you for joining us for God's Word for the Modern World, New Beginning Baptist Church's Adult Sunday School class. Excuse me, last week we started a, uh, hopefully it'll be a, a <laughs> this is a relative term for uh, the lessons we have, a, a short lesson. <laughs> so it'll probably only be a month or so. Uh, we started talking about, and it's kind of a, a tag on to what we had been studying, and that's what how Christians should be acting in, in the end times. Right? And part of that was we, we need to be faithful servants out there taking the talents that the Lord gave us and in, in investing those. And we do that by taking the gospel that he's freely given us that we believe in and sharing that with others. Well, that's what he commanded in Acts. We went back to there and, and tied it in with our previous study. Because there in Acts, Jesus was ready to ascend to heaven. And what did the apostles ask him? Right? When are you going to set up your kingdom? Right? That's what they asked. Because that's what was furthest, foremost on their mind. And part of that is because they knew scripturally there was nothing else to do to fulfill prophecy. So the next thing was his coming. Well, they didn't understand at that point in time yet the church age, the age of grace that God was going to extend in the Gentiles. And they were going to learn that later. But they asked, and Jesus said what? It's not for you to know the times and the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria. And this is where they didn't quite understand. And the uttermost parts of the earth. Right? That meant the Gentiles. But Jesus said, in essence, to paraphrase rude, uh, crudely, okay, don't worry about my coming again. <laughs> that's none of your business. He didn't say it that way. But yeah, that's not what your concern should be, is what he was saying. Your concern should be being witnesses. Being witnesses, and we talked about, you know, the definition of witness, you know, and, and so on last week, and we understand that when it talks about us and our witness, it's a matter of sharing your personal experience. Yes. Right? That's a witness can only testify to something that he has personally seen. Heard, etc. Right? So when we're talking about a witness, when he was talking about these, and we look to other scriptures where he told them, You've been with me, you've seen me, you've heard me, now you're my witnesses. He told that to them the same way with us. But notice what he said there, because we're going to hit it later today. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That's a key part of witnessing. Yes. You can't witness what God has done if you haven't received the Holy Spirit which is a result of salvation. When you put your trust in Jesus Christ we receive the Holy Spirit then we can be witnesses. I, I can stand up here all day long and, and, and tell you what I think Okay, but I've never experienced it then how much credit do I have? Right? When you share what you've experienced, then people understand that it's your witness. Right? Now, we talked about that last week, and we kind of were, were ended up at that point. It's important to include in your witness the scriptural reasons why you believe. Right? And that's why things like the Roman roads are good. Because you can incorporate the scriptures in what you did to get saved. And now it's your personal experience, that salvation experience. And you can share it with the scriptures. Because we know that that's the scriptures of what the Holy Spirit actually uses. 
it's good to make it very personal. Because when you make it personal and they see that this is what you did, you know, it's not the, 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 what we get accused of as being the old Bible stubborn and, and, and saying you're all going to hell and you're, you're terrible people and all this. No. When you do a personal experience, you can share how through the scriptures and through preaching, etc., you understood that you were a sinner and that you were lost on your way to hell and that there was no way. You can use the scriptures to show them I believe that. Then, I started understanding. The Holy Spirit helped me understand that Jesus did what I couldn't do. He, through his death, burial, and resurrection, paid the price yes. for my sins. And when I believed on him, and you can go to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. It's a great place to go. I believed in my heart and the God saved me. The Holy Spirit came in. It's a personal thing. Huh? And we're going to get it a little bit later. But the other part of the witness is if that's true, was there a change in your life? Because it's that change in spite of what all the Pentecostals say, and nothing against them necessarily, but you know, the, the, the speaking in tongues, and you know, and if you're really way out, handling of snakes, and, and you know, healing the sick, that's not the evidence of salvation. You can go to the scriptures. The evidence of salvation is a changed life. The Holy Spirit comes in and changes you. If people don't see that, then your witness, verbal witness, is less effective. And we'll get that a little bit more here later. So it's all part of that, but it's, it's a very personal thing. When you share with someone on a personal level what's happened to you, it makes a bigger difference. pastor can attest to this and and we call the test to different things, but it, it, it's like the scriptures talk about, you know, God has comforted us yeah. so that we can be a comfort to others. When you go to someone who is hurting, okay, because they've lost a loved one, especially a spouse, right? Yes. When you go and share personally your experience with them, it's a much better help than for me to just say, we're praying for you, and, I, and I, it's got to be hard. Yeah. But they know I've not experienced it, so they appreciate it, but it doesn't mean the same as someone who has lost their spouse and goes and shares with them their personal yes. experience. Yes. And I know what you're going through because I've experienced it. Witnessing is the same thing. When you, on a personal level, share with another person how you got saved, how the scriptures spoke to your heart, how the Holy Spirit helped you understand, and you got to the point where you accepted Jesus as Savior, then he started changing your life. When that's a personal thing, it means a whole lot more than me just quoting a bunch of scriptures to him. Right? Saying, oh, you're a sinner, and here's the scripture that says you're a sinner. Oh, yeah, you need to get saved, and here's the scripture that says you need to get saved. But, yeah, it's not near as effective as when you make it personal. And that's what the apostles did, right? That's what Jesus was saying. Then. But you need to do it in the power of the Holy Spirit. You always need to be, <laughs> and you guys know what, what I'm talking about. I don't think I'm that much different than most of you, but maybe I am, I don't know. But, yeah, when, when you're witnessing, you need to be praying for the Holy Spirit to help you at the same time. You, know, you can be praying while you're speaking, okay? And if you can't, then say a quick prayer before you start speaking, <laughs> right? It's important, okay? There's nothing more important in this world 
than witnessing to someone else to help them get saved. To help them understand, okay, that they're not different than anybody else. You were in the same position they were in. There was a time when you didn't understand. And sharing the scriptures and your personal experience based on those scriptures can reach a person better than just yeah. quoting a bunch of scriptures. The Roman road is great, but if that's all you do is quote a bunch of scriptures, yeah. some people say, well, that's just the Bible. You know, what difference does that make? When it's personal, it makes a big difference. So part of our witness, and we'll probably repeat some of this later, and, and I'm thinking about towards the end, we'll, we'll maybe even take that book back here that has the Roman road. Okay? We need to be thinking about our own witness and how to share that. Okay? And as we mentioned last week, there, there was... Operation Go that we went through years ago when we were back over in the little building. And there was a lot of good things in it for us. There really was. Uh, it just emphasized that drawing the net too much. <laughs> Where I think, you know, if you're not careful, yeah. okay, you can convince people they got saved when they didn't really do the key thing, believe in the heart. Okay, they said the words that you led them to say, but they didn't really believe it in the heart, but then at the end you say, well, praise God, you're saved. Well, now you've given them false hope. Yeah. Okay? So I've got to where I, I, I'm, I'm almost afraid to tell anyone that they got saved. <laughs> right? Uh, I'll tell them what they need to do if they got saved. They need to go, you know, Confess it with the mouth to someone. Hopefully go to church somewhere and do that. And then follow baptism. But I, I, I need to be very cautious about saying, Well, praise God, you're saved. <laughs> because they may not be. Right? They may not be. And as we said, the first thing before we even start witnessing is to know ourselves that we're saved based on Scripture. So the Roman road is a good place, especially if you're going to try to use that, to say, how did you know you were a sinner that needed to get saved? Well, it was through the scriptures, the Holy Spirit speaking in the heart. I heard preachers preach this, but here's what the, the, the scriptures say. And I understood that and realized I was lost. I needed to get saved. Then you go to the next step. So, you know, it's a structure. So you need to develop it. If you don't like want to use the Roman roads, you need to at least hit all the points. Okay? And know from the scriptures and learn the scriptures how to incorporate that into your witness when you witness the people. Now sometimes you don't have a chance to sit down and go through all that with the person. Okay? But you can share a little bit at a time. And sometimes, like I said, you might want to think about a, the, the one-minute elevator speech. Right? That, again, Operation Go had that in it. How do you convince your testimony to what's really the essential to be able to share with someone? Okay? So those are things we need to think about. Right? We need to rely on the Holy Spirit. We need to emphasize the, the simple truths of the gospel. If a person understands that they're lost, a sinner on their way to hell, that there's nothing they can do about it, and they need to get saved, then the gospel is pretty simple. If they're at that point and they want to know how to get saved, it's pretty simple. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. Okay? If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You don't have to get baptized. You don't have to speak in tongues. You don't have to do anything else. He says, either that or God's a liar, right? He says, 
if you believe in the heart and confess with the mouth, you shall be saved. And we've talked about that before. That shall and shall is an absolute. So God says it right there very clearly. So you just need to be able to share that. Another one is God so loved the world. We'll hit this a little bit later. That's part of salvation. It's God's love towards us. But when you're talking about the simple truth, he says it right there. What do you need to believe? Okay? If you believe in your heart, God hath raised him from the dead. He died, was buried, and was raised from the dead. That's why we looked at, started looking at last week, in Acts, when they were giving their witness, the apostles, it was always about that they had witnessed the resurrection. Because the resurrection is what proves God has accepted yes. Christ's sacrifice. <clears throat> so it's that proof from God through the resurrection that kind of is the final record that Jesus saves. So that's important to it's, you know, include that in your testimony. Because we serve a living Savior. We're witnesses to that. Because we know what God has done in us since we accepted Him as Savior. We can share that. We can share the hope we have in our God now. Because we serve a little, a, a, little, a living Savior who ever liveth to make intercession for us. We can go on and on and on. We'll hit some more of this later about God's love towards us. That's, that's what makes Christianity different. All the other religions of the world. You have to do something to win the favor of God. And then maybe if you win enough favor of God, he'll let you into heaven. That's what Pastor related a while back. The guy that went to the mosque. Okay, asked the imam there. Okay, if you do everything that the Quran tells you to do, are you sure you're going to go to heaven? And he said, no. That's other religion. Christianity isn't about pleasing, doing something to please God. It's about God so loved the world that he gave himself the sacrifice. God sacrificed himself through our Lord Jesus Christ who was fully God. Because God that we serve, our Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ the Son, the Holy Spirit, Triune God, loved us so that He did what we couldn't do. We couldn't offer a sinless sacrifice. But He could so God did what we couldn't because he loved us so much. That's what witnessing is about. Helping other people understand that. It's, 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 it's hard to explain sometimes. If you leave out that portion, okay, then you've left out some of the evidence, if you will, that convinces people. If they haven't seen in you Christ's love, then talking about it, saying that you have it, won't do any good. Then we'll get into that a little bit later. You know, our actions are as much as our witnesses, our words. So when we talk about this personal witness, it's all about what have we experienced. But to be effective in sharing that, we have to think about it. You have to go back and review it every once in a while. You, you can go home today or this week and start looking at the Romans road and say, okay, here's the main points that should be in my witness. 
that I was a lost sinner. Right? The penalty of my sin was hell. God sent Jesus to pay the price of that penalty. I accepted our Lord Jesus Christ because I believed that God sent Jesus and he died, buried, rose again. And when I did that, Jesus, God, said in his word that I am saved. The Holy Spirit comes in, etc. Go through those points and make sure you have a scripture for each one of those to share. And you can go through that and review it every once in a while so that it's fresh in your mind. That makes you more effective in sharing your witness. But it's important to do all of this in the power of the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we're not going to be very effective. And oftentimes, we may go beyond what the Spirit meant for us to do at the time right? and do more harm than good. And we all understand that. Right? Uh, as Pastor mentioned many, many times, when, when we were first saved, we couldn't understand why everybody didn't want to get saved. And we, we browbeat some people sometimes. <laughs> and, and probably did more harm than good. So we understand that a witness is a very personal thing. And as we saw last week, the apostles continually, whenever they were witnessing and sharing the gospel, they would say, share what they had actually witnessed, and the main thing they shared was the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So the Holy Spirit is important, and He'll lead and guide us and let us know. Uh, turn with me to Acts chapter 5. I'm going to have to go. Even though this is much easier to read, I'm going to have to go back to my old Bible. Yes. I can never find the turn the pages. Acts chapter 5 and down to verse 29. Okay? Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Now, just a side note there. These preachers that say repentance isn't part of salvation, there's too many scriptures like this one that says repentance is essential. He says, And we are witnesses of these things, and so also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given them that obey Him. The Holy Ghost that is in us is the one that gives us the power to witness. That Holy Spirit in us is that spirit of a sound mind. Right? That spirit of love, sound mind and power. That's the Holy Spirit in us. That's what he was saying here. Their witness was empowered by the Holy Spirit, who himself is a witness to who Christ was and what Christ did for us. So he says, uh, in other places, they said, we did testify of these things. We saw him being raised, or after he was raised, we were witnesses of that firsthand. Yes. <clears throat> In Acts chapter uh, uh, 10, turn with me to Acts chapter 10. And down in verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respective person. But in every nation he hath uh, uh, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Remember this is where he was talking about the, the Gentiles. He said, The word of God which uh, God sent unto the children of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ 
he is Lord of all. That word I say, ye know, which was published throughout Judea and began in Galilee after the baptism of John uh, preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, and he went about doing good and healing all that were uh, oppressed and the devils, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. He says, we were witnesses. Not because we're good, but God chose this. This is part of God's plan. God chose to use witnesses to help other people get saved. We need God's power through the Holy Spirit to be able to do that effectively. And there's a whole bunch of people <laughs> out wanting to come in. <laughs> so we need to stop there today. <coughs> but we'll pick that up next week and continue on in this study. In this day and time, the church, Christians, need to get back to witnessing. Yes, we do. We've gotten away from them. Amen. Okay? And it's essential. It's God's plan of how he reaches others. So we need to, to really be uh, serious about this. Praise Lord. Joining us for God's Word for the Modern World, New Beginning Baptist Church's Adult Sunday School Class.